Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's newsletter, well it's all about capability statistics and what we're going to try and do is to take a look at the full set of capability statistics and how they sort of compare to one another, why they're called different names etc. Um, one of the things I will say before we start this, um, this is my best attempt to do this. Uh, this is my understanding. I'm going to talk to you also about how I use these capability statistics. If you can add anything to this subject and you want to leave some comments in the comments field below, then that would be fantastic because it would help us all understand these capability statistics all the more clearly. So let's start off. We're going to take a look at process capability statistics there's plenty of them about we're going to go CP CPK there's an alternative version called PP PPK so we're going to take a look at those. We're going to take a look at those first. I guess there's alternative names. This one I would call short term capability. This one I would call long term capability. Now, CPK, PPK. Essentially, what's the difference? Now, the difference is not in the way the data is collected. These phrases here, this is the short-term capability, this is the long-term capability. And what that makes it sound like, is it makes it sound like this is how the data was collected. So, in other words, we collected the data over a short period, we collected the data over a long period, and that's not correct. Short-term and long-term is actually about the way the calculation is done and specifically it's about the way standard deviation is calculated. So up here, the standard deviation, this is the Schuert methodology and he uses the technique R bar over D2. What Schuert is doing is he's trying to simplify the calculation of standard deviation in the days when he had no calculator and no computer. So he's using R bar over D2. So if I draw a little graph, what he's doing, he's collecting a subgroup. Here's the range of the subgroup. This is the, the maximum value that I saw. That's the minimum value that I saw. And what Schuert is using is the range. So he uses the range for each subgroup. So he has a subgroup, he has a subgroup, he has a subgroup, he has a subgroup. Each one has a range and then he works out the average for that. Now think about that. Let's say this is a subgroup of four samples. Typically those samples, he's put his hand out and he's caught four parts off a machine, one behind the other. So think about that. This little subgroup only contains short-term variability. What Schuert cannot see is the fact that these subgroups bob up and down. So obviously, if you worked out standard deviation correctly, you would think there was th this much variability. If you use Schuert's methodology, you think there is less variability. This is known as short term because it is within subgroup and it cuts out lots of the things like changes in material and things like that. Okay, so there is short term. Long term, therefore, is the big fat standard deviation calculation. Every data point take away the average, 
Square the difference. Divide by the number of samples, minus 1. And take the root. And that is how PPK and CPK are worked out. That is how CP and CPK are worked out. That's the long term. Because the long term takes into account everything that's going on. Okay, so they're the basic statistics. Um, now, there are more statistics to add to this. Let's add another one. CM. CMK. This is known as a, um, it's a machine, they talk about it being a machine capability. Okay, what is this thing? Well, this thing is another version of this. Because what they ask you to do here is to collect 50 consecutive, I can't spell it, 50 consecutive data points. In other words, what you're trying to do is you're trying to eliminate long-term changes due to tool wear, material changes, etc. And other adjustments may be due to maintenance deterioration. So this is known as machine capability and this is as good as your process capability can literally ever get because it just contains the slight wear and the slight differences in the machine. Okay, so that's CM, CMK. It's another version of this, but just to make it confusing, it's using this calculation to calculate the standard deviation. But the data has been collected over a short term period. Okay, and then finally, of course, we have sigma level and sigma capability. Well, sigma level and sigma capability. Sigma level is essentially PPK times 3. Sigma capability, well, what's that? Well, it's PP times 3. So it's just another version of this thing. Now that is my attempt to explain all the process capability measures. What I'm going to do next is talk to you about how I use these. Okay. So now we've been through the list of the capability statistics, how would you use those? Which ones would I use? Which ones do I refer to? When do I use them? Well, I'm going to start with the idea of a new product. I mean, this probably also uh, applies to when I have a new problem, yeah? So it might be a new product. I suppose I could say a new problem. Because the first thing I'm going to do is the CM, CMK. In other words, what I'm going to do is 50 consecutive, 50 consecutive data points. Really important hands off, no adjustments. Let's just make 50 with my hands off the machine and let's see what the machine is capable of. And really what I'm asking is, do I have a chance? In other words, is this actual machine, is this actual machine capable of doing the job? Now probably at this point, I would probably want a really good capability. Something with some space here, some room. Because don't forget, there's variability that hasn't happened yet in this data set. Therefore, I need some room for the process. The way I'm going to describe it is to get stressed for the long-term variables to kick in here. Okay, so 
I probably want a reasonably good capability. Now, of course, if I don't get it, the first thing I'm going to do is either change the machine or look at the machine from a maintenance point of view, see if there's something I can do to improve the machine. Maybe bearings need changing, maintenance needs doing, work that we haven't done for a long, long time. Um, so I'm going to use CMCMK first because if I can't get a decent capability with that, when all of this stuff kicks in, I, I really don't stand a chance. Uh, and then, once I've got that, then what I'm going to do is the PP PPK. Uh, now what I'm going to do is probably collect 50 to 100 over a number of days maybe hours and I'm going to take a look at what the long term variability looks like. To be honest this is the one that I use the most and then what I do is I think about how I've collected the data. So if I collect the data like this over a short period I know that the what variability does it contain? Use your common sense. What variability does it contain? When I open this up and I go for a long term capability I put, it could be days, it could be hours. I would talk to the, the people on the machine, I'd talk to the maintenance guys and I'd say, well, over what period do you expect this to appear? And if they say, well, all the variability would appear in the first three hours, then I'd collect the data over three hours. If they say to me, well, probably take two weeks for all the variables to kick in, you know what? This might not be weeks or days, sorry, days or hours. This might be weeks. So, I just use my common sense, talk to the people, get to know your process, apply these things to the process, don't apply these things based on rules, you'll make loads of mistakes when you do that. This is a practical thing, it will help you to figure out what's going on, as long as you're thinking straight, and you think, okay, where did I collect the data from, it's long term, what does that mean? Could be that you collected 50 consecutive, you could still be calculating this with a the big standard deviation calculation, but you'd know it's got some variability missing. Use your common sense. These tools are fantastic. What do they basically do? You know, they are brilliant because they predict tomorrow. Why wouldn't you use these things? That is what they're for. They're to predict the long-term defect rates for your process when you've got a new product or indeed a new problem. So again, I said could be could be product or problem. What would I do if I got a problem? I'd want to do 50 consecutive hands off and I'd want to see how the process works first. And I can decide what to do next. There are the capability statistics and that is typically the way that I use them. Uh, the software that I use, just one last thing, uh, SPC. Excel, when it does the CPK calculation, it's actually doing this one, but it's called CPK. It's actually doing the long term, and that's that's the one that I use. There is a version that will calculate the short term as well, but um, when SPC Excel does the CPK for me, I'm using this one. So if, if I've collected the date the short term, I'm doing this. If I've collected the date the long term, I'm doing this. But I keep my wits about me and I know what I'm doing. If you use these capability statistics, they'll tell you where the money is disappearing and then you can learn how to make more money. That's what this stuff is about. Capability statistics. If you'd like to know more about any of the concepts covered in this video or any of the other concepts covered in my, uh, my other tutorial videos, then here's my latest book. Drink tea and read the paper. Covers everything you need to know about how to make sure that Six Sigma becomes world-class engineering in your company. Otherwise, if you'd like to get in touch with me, a little bit of help about Lean, a little bit of help with Six Sigma, please contact me on the email below.